and click login, that's it. Game over. We got the username and password just like that. Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. And today I'll be teaching you ethical hacking via cross-site scripting. So what does cross-site scripting mean? It means they allow us to literally plant our own code into any website, allowing us to track the users, redirect the website, and do literally anything that you want. And additionally, we'll also be using browser exploitation framework to help us plant our own code, our own script into any website so that we have full control of the entire site. Sounds pretty dangerous, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's why big disclaimer, right? Hacking is illegal. If you want to hack, hack in your own home lab environment just like what i'm doing here on webcode which is installed in my own home lab environment by the way remember to subscribe to the channel so that you can learn all about ethical hacking and penetration testing and like the video if all this content has been valuable and insightful for you so without further ado let us get started on today's tutorial <laughs> So right in front of us, we have webgoat.net, which is a vulnerable web application system for us to perform our penetration testing and all the ethical hacking techniques on this particular platform. And right here on the left side, I have cross-site scripting, and I can go ahead and click under store XSS. So what does this do right here is it is very similar to any website you go to, right? Any sites where you can post a comment, post a review, and right here under email, all I got to do now is go ahead and enter, say, my email, all right, Loy Liang Yang at loyliangyang.com. And all I got to do under the comment section is to go ahead and enter any comments. So for example, I can enter, all right, this is a test comment. All right, and go ahead and click save comment. So the first thing you want to do whenever you're encountering any features, any functions, is to go ahead and test it out and see what is considered as a normal behavior. Next up, what you can do is now, this is the exciting part. This is the part where you are waiting for. And that is to test whether the comment or the email section is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, meaning are we able to plan our own script into the site. So what I can do now is to go ahead and enter under the comment section, or I can open script, and I can close script. And what I can do right in the middle is to go ahead and enter an alert to see if this will get loaded as a script rather than as a website content. So I can go ahead and enter the following, hacked by Loy, all right? And I can close this with a semicolon. Go ahead and click save comment and boom, we are in. Literally, our own code just got loaded just like that. As simple as that. And we managed to find one vulnerability in which we can now plot in our own malicious code. And it's pretty easy, isn't it? And that's scary because you can literally try to find all these places, text input box, and you could try to plan any of this script in. And that's it, game over, we are in. So how can I demonstrate further about the ability for us to control the entire website? So I'll go ahead and click OK on this. And I'll go to the top left corner and I'll click under testing database. I'll scroll down further and I can click rebuild database. So the wonderful part about this, on WebGoat is that whenever you screw up anything, all right, you can easily try to rebuild the entire database and you can start afresh. So that's wonderful. That's amazing because you can keep testing different techniques and you will not have to worry about actually taking down the entire server. So that's fantastic. So once the database has been rebuilt, right, you can go ahead and go back to cross-site scripting, click under start XSS. And what I can do here now is to go ahead and open up browser exploitation framework. So I have already downloaded it and I can go ahead and CD Biff, all right, and it can enter ls to see all the files that are part of the Biff, and you can easily do a git clone on this. And this is the link to GitHub where you can download browser exploitation framework for you to run and implant all this malicious code and script into any website. So I have already downloaded it, and all I got to do now is go ahead and start a browser exploitation framework. So I can enter sudo dot slash beef. Hit enter on this. Enter your password for super user. Hit enter, and now we are loading up browser exploitation framework. So next up, what we can do here, the important part is this particular item, this particular row, which is called hook URL. So this is the JavaScript, which will then allow us the ability to plan it into literally any website that you have found a vulnerability for cross-site scripting on. So all I got to do now is do a right click, and I can click under the copy link address. I can go back to any browser and paste it over here and hit enter. And this is, all right, as you can see here, jQuery, JavaScript, all these different details right here. Okay, and some parts of it, you can easily copy it and that would allow you access to different components of a browser. So once you got a link, all right, all we got to do is ensure that we can copy the link, go back to the vulnerable website. And in this case, I can go and enter email. 
So I enter Loy Liang Yang at Loy Liang Yang dot com. And under the comment section, I can go and enter script source equal. Okay, and I can do a double quote and paste the link, which will point us to the JavaScript file. And I can now close the script. So once I close the script, I can go ahead and click save comment. All right. So here we go. We got it. We're in. We have just planted our malicious code into the website, allowing us to track users and to control the entire website fully. So what we can do now is do a right click and click inspect element to see if our script got loaded. All right. So I can see here we have content. Okay. As the following. And I can go ahead and open content. And right here at the bottom left side, I can see the following, right? We have the email, which is loyalangyang and loyalangyang.com. And right here we can see the following, all right? This is the part that we're looking for. So we have script, source, and we got 192.168.0.106, which is our Kyle Linux machine, followed by the port number as 4444, followed by slash hook.js. All right, so we have planted our script into the site, which has a vulnerable comment section. And again, you can plant this anywhere. It can be a comment section. It can be on a review section. It can even be on a search section and so on. So once you have it running, all we got to do next is to log in to browser exploitation framework. So going back to terminal, all right, we have the link to the user interface. So all I got to do now is right click on the UI panel, click open link, and this will open up a new tab on Firefox or any browser. So go ahead and enter the username. So in my case, I have the username of Loy Liang Yang, and I can enter a password that I've set during the creation of browser exploitation framework. And once we log in, you can see right here, all right, on the left side, we have the following information. So let me zoom in a little more so that it is easier for you to see. So on the left side, I have the IP addresses and I have the IP addresses of all those browsers who have came in and loaded the JavaScript that we have planted into any of these sites. And here we have the online browser, okay? So right here, we can see that this is the browser that is currently inside the platform. And what I can do next is to go back into another browser. Okay, so this is my host browser that I'm doing all these tutorials for you. And when I go under the cross-site scripting, I click on the stored XSS and I clicked on it. And what we are seeing here is that we have just loaded the script too. As you can see right here, email as well as the comment section, which has the script. And we have verified that via inspect element. Going back to Kyle Linux, we can see right here, we have a new IP address coming in and we can tell that this is a Windows 10 computer based on the pop-up that's showing right here on the left side. And we can see all the browser capabilities so that we can prepare for the next type of cyber attack that we can launch against the browser. And as you can see here, we have the date stamp, we have the browser language, so I am coming from Singapore, and we can see that there are certain plugins that a browser can take in. Okay, so we can see all these details and all these different kind of data. But what's more interesting and more frightening is what can we do now that we have loaded our code? What we can do is go under the command section and we can select under, say, for example, social engineering. And right here, this is the part where we can actually control the website to display different kind of information back to the user. Literally, all I got to do is enter, say, for example, Google phishing, and I can click execute, right? So once I click execute, and what we can see next is when I go back to the browser, we are now being placed into a login page. And this is scary, isn't it? Because all we did was go to an actual website, look at the comments, and next thing you know, you are hacked. What else can we do? Going back to Call Linux, going back to browser exploitation framework, I can select, say, for example, pretty tough. And again, I'll now go ahead and click under execute. And going back to the browser, we see that there's a pop-up, Facebook session time now. So very quickly, there's a fake pop-up. And say the user, go ahead and enter the username or the email address and hit onto the password field and click login. That's it. Game over. We got the username and password just like that. And if I go back to Kyle Linux, I can see that there is a module results history. I'll go ahead and click on it. And right here, we can see the email as well as the password. Of course, this is not my real password. So this is a password I use for demonstration purposes, okay? So if you try to log into my account using this password, you will not be able to get access into the account, all right? I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And we'll like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.